This is my favorite easy vegan and gluten-free dessert or breakfast. Half a banana mash, two tablespoons almond butter, coconut flour, almond milk, lots of chocolate chips, microwave for two minutes, and voila. What's up guys? Today we're going to be making no-bake Oreo cookie dough. First up, you need softened butter and granulated sugar. Cream these together. Then add milk and vanilla extract and mix these in. Add the heat-treated flour and salt and mix until fully combined. Then add the crushed Oreos and fold these into the mix. Spoon the mix into a bowl or use an ice cream, cheesecake or other no bake You already know I love chicken thighs and it's my favorite cut from a chicken. These were so juicy and packed with flavor, you guys have got to try them. I'm using bone-in chicken thighs. If you don't like bone-in chicken thighs, you could use boneless, but then you're missing out on all that good crispy skin, so I would use bone-in. I marinated this in three tablespoons of coconut aminos. If you don't have coconut aminos, soy sauce is fine. A tablespoon of garlic, a tablespoon of Dijon mustard, and some salt. I marinated these for about four hours, but you could marinate them even longer if you have the time. I trimmed off that extra chicken skin and patted them dry. In a small separate bowl, I mixed together some Dijon, avocado oil, and a bunch of different spices. The full recipe is going to be on Instagram, so make sure you check me out over there. I brushed that on and threw these in the oven at 425 for one hour. And you guys already know, if you want to see more easy recipes like this, be sure to hit that follow button. If I ever had to choose my last meal, it would be this dish. This is my take on tagliatelle alla bolognese which is the traditional meat sauce from Bologna, where I was supposed to be abroad right now. This takes a really long time to make, but it's not that much work, so it's the kind of thing that you do while you have to do laundry and get a lot of other little things done in the house. I'm also announcing the soft launch of my new website, Shack Eats, which is the same as my Instagram account. Basically, I've had two websites for a long time, and I wanted to combine them and make it more coherent. I've been working on this website for three months now. I'm super excited, and all of the recipes from my old websites will just be all in one. I worked with a web developer to make it super user-friendly, and I spent every single penny of the one sponsorship I did on this website. That being said, it just went live, so if you see like a typo or something doesn't work, please let me know. The most exciting thing is that the website is not just about me I'm working with some of your favorite creators to have them as featured writers too I can't wait for you guys to see this mashed potatoes should not have lumps these are the best another episode back to basics three pounds rusted potatoes or you can use Yukon Golds wash them don't be dirty one inch dice fill with cold water to the cook evenly bring to a bubble over high heat Toast your salt vigorously Bubble, 10 to 12 minutes. Return to the pot. The heat of the pot will evaporate the excess moisture. Don't skip this step. If you do, they'll be watery. Let it set five minutes. Three quarter cup, unsalted butter. Half a cup, heavy cream. Melt the butter and warm the cream, medium low heat. Use a ricer or a food mill, no lumps. Add the butter and the cream. Truffle salt, because you're fancy. Truffle oil, because you're extra fancy. Okay, I know what you're thinking. Is there really Brussels sprouts and syrup on top of this pizza? There is, but it's a pumpkin pizza, so I made it sweet and savory. And I'm using one of these Kbosh pizza crusts again. I just love how convenient these are, and they just make a really easy dinner. And if you're interested in any of these crusts, there is a link to their website in my bio with a discount. I'm using the sage sausage, which is what a lot of people would use for their stuffing on Thanksgiving. And then in the sausage grease, I'm going to crisp up some of these Brussels sprouts. I'm using ricotta cheese as the base, just because ricotta pairs really well with sweet stuff. And then I layered on my sausage and Brussels sprouts and threw it in the oven just to let that ricotta warm up. This was fun to make for fall and super easy. I want to know what would you guys put on your pumpkin pizzas? Let me know in the comments. I eat this breakfast every morning. It's really nutritious, high in protein, and it tastes lovely. So first thing, 60 grams of oats, then some unsweetened almond milk, bang that in the microwave for 10 minutes. Then in a separate bowl, bang a bit of protein in, wee bit of almond milk, and give it a mix. The reason I do it in a separate bowl is it just mixes better. So once you whack your protein and oats together, chop up a banana, stick it on top, drizzle a bit of honey, and since we're being ultimately as healthy as possible, some chai seeds on top to finish it off. All right, y'all, we making Korean fire chicken wings. This one right here, please make it. Trust me on this. Start by adding salt, pepper, garlic powder. Throw that in the fridge. 
apple cider vinegar, soy sauce in the cup, corn syrup in the cup, followed by the ketchup. I know y'all know this ramen right here. All you want is the sauce. Put that in and mix it up. And I get to cutting some garlic. Throw these in the bowl with the chicken. Crack one egg and mix it all up good. Pour that sauce in with the garlic, oil, mix it up. Then add some water and mix it up again and let that thing simmer a little bit. Fry that chicken at 350, five minutes. Take it out, let it chill for a bit. Then throw it back in to double fry that shit. If you got it looking like this, all you gotta do now is get that thing sauced up. Make sure all spots are covered. Plate that shit, make that thing look pretty, and you can thank me later for this one. Here's how you make the best brownies ever. They're only eight ingredients, 100 calories, and vegan. Don't believe me? Well, try it yourself. First, melt your chocolate and mix it until it's nice and smooth. Then add your yogurt and brown sugar to the chocolate. Really, any sugar works well here. Mix the wet together and move on to the dry. I'm lazy and always just mesh the dry ingredients right into the wet. But if you really want to, you can combine the dry ingredients in a separate bowl and then mix it into the wet. Pour in the milk of your choice. I used oat milk because that's all I had on hand. And of course, more chocolate chips because let's be honest, more chocolate is always better. Pour the batter into a pan and bake. This recipe can easily be doubled to make a bigger batch or even made in a cupcake tin for individual servings. This is the easiest brownie recipe ever, and coming from a person who loves desserts filled with dairy and butter, I promise you will not miss it here. Enjoy! Alright y'all, today we're going to be doing some cheesesteak egg rolls. These things are fire! Start off by dicing up an entire onion and half a bell pepper, whatever color you choose. Put those to sear on the pan with some oil. Finally cut up your meat like this. Once your onions and bell peppers are done, you want to scoot that to the side and throw your beef in there. Season it with some sasson and a good amount of some lari seasoning salt. I have to remove them, but just throw them back in there. Mix all that up together. Your concoction should look like this. Grab your egg roll and a little bit of meat and throw in there your favorite desired cheese. Roll it up, and this should all start looking like this. Fry that in some oil until golden brown. Should look like this. Cut that in the middle. Oh, uh, look at that goodness right there. And finally, top it off with whatever sauce you want. Look at that, immaculate. Follow me for more recipes, guys. Have you guys ever tried enoki mushrooms? Here's a wonderful way to eat it. Wash and separate your enokis. Get thinly sliced beef like this. Place the mushrooms down and wrap it up nice and cozy. Give it some lovin'. The sauce is simple, just water, ginger, garlic, mirin, soy sauce, and sugar. Oil on a pan, drop in your wrapped enoki babies. Make sure you cook all sides of the beef, then pour on your sauce. Top it off with some sesame seeds, and there's your easy enoki beef rolls. Crunchy and savory. Mm -mm -mm. You ready? Let's make some stuff. Salmon. Make a cross slit in your salmon. Miss Salmon, you're gonna have to excuse me while I violate you really quickly, but you should be able to slide your finger in like so. One can of lump crab meat in the bowl. Four ounces of cream cheese in the bowl. One egg beat like you need in the bowl. A half a cup of mozzarella and one tablespoon of parsley. Grab your girl Obey, we need one tablespoon. Grab your girl Garlic, we need one tablespoon and two tablespoons of mayonnaise. Carefully and gently knead your mixture together with a wooden spoon. We got your girl olive ole. Coat your salmon evenly in olive oil. Knead one third cup of breadcrumbs into your mix. Season your salmon with black pepper, garlic, Italian seasoning, and old bay. You want to take small portions of your mixture and stuff it into the salmon. Then you want to take a mound of the mixture and form it on top of the salmon. Top the salmon with more breadcrumbs, parsley, and black pepper. Bake on 375 for 25 minutes. It's that time of the year. Let's make spatchcock roasted chicken. First, spatchcock the chicken by taking out the backbone. Save the backbone for later. Once done, flip the chicken back around and flatten out the breastbone by pressing firmly. Then pat dry. Start loosening the skin so you can add in the butter. Drizzle a little oil and start flavoring with your favorite seasonings. Raise some oil in your roasting pan and add the chicken. Don't forget to tuck in the wings. This is optional, but you can add some garlic and onions around. This will help flavor the juices that come out. Roast on 400 for about an hour to an hour and 15 minutes. Meanwhile, make stock with the backbone, the innards, and some aromatics. Drain and set aside. Start boiling potatoes. Once the chicken's done, set aside to rest. Add a little stock to the roasting pan to release the brown bits. Strain back into the stock and set aside to make a gravy. Start making your favorite mashed potato recipe. I love adding extra flavor to my mashed potatoes by adding borsen and cheese. To make easy semi-homemade gravy, add poultry gravy to your stock and cook until thickened. This is the perfect fall dinner. Enjoy! Today I'm celebrating by making a flavorful tomato ricotta bruschetta. To a baking sheet, add multicolored cherry tomatoes, thickly sliced garlic, about a tablespoon of good olive oil, a little salt, and pepper. Mix so everything's coated evenly. 
Then place in a 350 oven for 40 minutes. You know they're done when they're starting to burst. They should look something like this. Now grab your ricotta and add salt, pepper, and some good olive oil. Mix well. Now all you have to do is cut some good bread. I'm using ciabatta. Lightly toast it and add your ricotta, tomatoes. Don't forget the garlic and the juices from the pan. Top with some basil if you want and that's it. It's extremely flavorful as is, but add some balsamic glaze if you want. Do what me if you try this. I hit 150,000 followers. Honey mustard salmon is definitely my favorite salmon. Let's make some. First, I mixed together equal parts Dijon mustard and honey. You could also use whole grain mustard. Then I added some garlic, lemon juice, salt, and pepper, and some olive oil. I don't really have measurements, but just taste as you go. Then I lined a pan with aluminum, greased it, but half of the mixture, put the salmon, then put the rest of it, and I put it all around. You can marinate for a few hours as well. I covered it with foil, baked at 375 for about 15 minutes, took it out, uncovered it, and then broiled it until the top began to bubble a little bit. That's it. Follow me for more recipes. Follow my Instagram. We're going to learn how to make sushi. We're going to show you how to make the best sushi bake ever. Six cups of imitation crab. One seedless cucumber. Yeah. Half cup of green onions. Half cup of mayo. 4 tablespoons of sriracha 8 ounces of cream cheese Mix, Mix everything, everything together 3 cups of sushi rice Sushi 4 tablespoons of rice vinegar Spread the rice all over Until it looks like this Furikake seasoning all over Yeah Add your sushi mix into the pan Spread it all over More furikake Yeah Sriracha all over Make a 450 fighting hay for 15 minutes And here we have the final product Best sushi, sushi ever This is a whole side of salmon And we're taking it to the next level This time we're cranking it up with mango habanero And let's make our filling Jalapeno, lemon, capers, parsley, cream cheese Mix and gently spread over the skin side And start to roll Cut slices and admire your cinnamon bun. Citrus, and let's hit the grill. Don't forget to make your bed. Tuck that salmon in, it's nap time. I give you sriracha candied bacon. Continue building our glaze with fresh habanero and mango. Maple syrup, a squeeze of grapefruit, and that's a glaze. Add to your salmon, and here we go. Finished with grapefruit zest, this is Salmon Bliss. Check me out on YouTube for the full video and recipe. Oh my God. Here is an easy and healthy breakfast idea. First, you're going to chop up some spinach, mushrooms, and a bell pepper. Prep and fill your muffin tray with your veggies. Then add your egg mixture on top. I'll write up the one that I made right here. Optional, you can add some cheese if you would like to. Then you're going to bake this at 350 for about 23 minutes. This is what it will look like once it's done. I made 10 and... While in quarantine, grilled romaine has become one of my favorite treats. Start by cutting a head of romaine in half. Next, use a pan or a grill pan if you have it and cover it in oil or butter. Place the cut heads of romaine face down. Now you can season these however you like. I love using this Parmesan cheese popcorn seasoning, salt and pepper. Once they're really starting to sizzle, flip them over. Next, repeat by seasoning this side as well. Then, if you want to make it a little less healthy and a lot more delicious, I highly recommend adding cheese. Place it on no heat or low heat until the cheese melts, and you're ready to die. There is nothing to these jack-o'-lantern quesadillas. They are so easy to make, and you can really put anything you want in them. I filled mine with cheddar cheese and chicken, but you put whatever you want in there. And all you have to do to bake them in the oven, spray them with a little bit of cooking spray, put them in a 400 degree oven. Trying to lose weight? Here's a perfect meal prep for you. Get some chicken breast, cut it in half, and poke it with a fork. Little bit of olive oil to glaze, then season it. Pink Himalayan salt, pepper, paprika, turmeric, Italian seasoning, garlic powder, onion powder. Now time for the green beans. Grab a cast iron skillet, lightly coat it with some olive oil, and then season it with pink Himalayan salt, pepper, garlic powder, and some red cayenne pepper. You're gonna preheat the oven to 400 degrees, and you're gonna pop it in there for 35 minutes. Now, time to go over to the grill. Lightly spray some non-stick on there, and then pop your chicken on. Once you do that, you're gonna cook it till it's 165 degrees in the middle. You're gonna flip it and get those nice char burns from the grill right there. After that, you're gonna plate it for about 10 minutes and then it's gonna head to the chopping block. Then you're gonna slice it into pieces. Once you slice it into pieces, you'll see the juices flowing. It'll be smelling real nice and it's absolutely perfectly done. Ding, 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 time to pull the green beans from the oven. Then you're gonna weigh it out to four ounces of green beans and six ounces of chicken breast and you're gonna devour it deliciously. Today I'm going to show you how to make an ice cream cake at home. First, create a layer of ice cream sandwiches. Next, cover the sandwiches with a layer of Cool Whip. 
Add a layer of chocolate syrup, then add graham cracker crumbs, chocolate chips, or whatever fillings you like. Cover it all with another layer of sandwiches. Top it off with Cool Whip or frosting, and then sprinkles for decor. When you cut into it, you get layers and layers of ice cream good. What up, y'all? Half Pan Dan here. Getting ready to one-up this smoked queso I've been seeing. We're gonna make it damn good, y'all. One whole block of Velveeta, about a cup of Mexican shredded cheese, one eight ounce block pepper jack, half cup of chopped onions, half a block of cream cheese, one pound cooked chorizo. Spicy Danos for you. Trigger time, baby. We're going to use a bunch of it. Actually, no, we're going to make it easy. We're going to pop that top. And we're just going to pour that flavor in just like that. Two cans of Rotel. We're going to add a couple tablespoons of minced garlic and some extra ground cumin. Let it smoke. A little update on how we're looking. Time for a taste. Here's a healthier, easy double chocolate cookie that will blow your mind by using cottage cheese. Extra soft, rich chocolatey flavor and quick to make. Prep to blend half a cup of low-fat cottage cheese, two tablespoon egg whites, quarter teaspoon vanilla extract, tablespoon of low-cal maple syrup, half a cup of rolled oats, quarter cup cocoa powder, scoop of protein powder, this is optional, quarter teaspoon of both baking soda and powder, and one tablespoon coconut oil. Blend all ingredients until smooth, add a tablespoon of dark chocolate, scoop your mix with a spoon, then transfer it over to a baking sheet. Should make about six big cookies. Bake for 12 to 15 minutes at 350 degrees, and there you go. Enjoy. I've been trying to make the best Mongolian beef for a while now, and this one's it. For prep, you're gonna start by slicing half a white onion, you get one tablespoon of minced garlic and ginger, you can get one pound of skirt steak, and you're gonna cut it on a diagonal against the grain. Against the grain is crucial, and diagonal is just for fun. Against the grain is to make it more tender, but we're gonna velvet it to make it even more tender. So you can go on with some cornstarch, egg, rice wine vinegar, and soy sauce, mix it up. The sauce has been elusive, but this one's you go fourth cup of soy sauce and two and a half tablespoons of brown sugar. Now we're gonna get a velvet ready beef, and you're gonna place it in hot oil. You can check that it's fry ready using a chopstick, just place the tip in there, and the bubbles from around is ready. You're gonna fry them for like two, three minutes, minutes and once they're nice and brown you're gonna take them out they're gonna get rice noodles and you're gonna go ahead and just go straight into the oil and they're gonna puff up crucial you're gonna set aside the oil leave a little bit in there add the garlic ginger onions cook that down a little bit add the beef back in and the sauce and the sauce is gonna cook up cook down and it's gonna thicken up after a little bit of mixing it and all you're gonna do is serve it on top of the crispy noodles and king crab and shrimp scampi anyone definitely one for the books now let's go salt up that pasta water Drop your pasta, I'm doing spaghetti. Okay, pay attention, this goes quick, olive oil. Dry your shrimp really well. Salt and pepper on those shrimp. Oh, I meant Sergeant Gilbert. Go ahead and drop your shrimp, a little more seasoning. A flip after 30 seconds, another 30 seconds. And remove your shrimp, add some butter to the same pan. Shallots, crushed garlic, saute, basil leaves. Optional, followed by some chili flakes. If you wanna add wine, do it now. I prefer it with lemon. Shrimp stock from yesterday's post. Juice your lemon, lemon zest. Reduce by half, now kill the heat. We're gonna start working in some cold unsalted butter. Now, shrimp peas back in, and I'm also adding some thick pieces of king crab. Do some Italian parsley, pasta in. Now we'll cook this pasta in the sauce for a minute. I mean, come on. Parmigiano Reggiano on top. Well, oh my God. <laughs> so good. Make sure to follow. I like to call this a baked potato casserole. It is a crowd favorite. First, you're gonna start with about six large russet potatoes, poke holes into it, cover with foil, and bake at 375 for about an hour and a half or until the inside is soft. Peel that really, really well. You wanna take out all the eyes, all the brown spots, add one stick or a half cup of butter, salt, and pepper, mash that together, add two tablespoons of heavy cream or more until you get your desired consistency, butter an eight by 11 dish, add the potatoes, then you're gonna cut up broccoli, I use frozen, add one cup of mozzarella cheese or more, mix that together, put it on top, and then I sprinkled with some cheddar cheese and baked at 350 until it was golden. Enjoy. 